Hi, yeah, it's Jackie here from the LGFA, and we're on another Zoom call here this afternoon. Uh, it's not LGFA HQ, it's my upstairs bedroom, which gives me a bit of uh, solitude for a while. So I'm very, very happy to be joined by uh, three special guests this afternoon. Rebecca Murphy is the Youth Mental Health Promotion Coordinator for Jigsaw. Uh, and on my bottom left, as I look, I have Joanne Ryan, who's the Campaign Officer at Jigsaw. Hi, Joanne, lovely wave there. Uh, the National Centre, of course, for Youth Mental Health. And bottom right, as I look, is Sarah Gordon, who is the Partnerships Manager for Lidl Ireland and Northern Ireland. Lidl, of course, the LGFA's lovely wave as well. Uh, Sarah, the LGFA's official retail <laughs> partner you. and National League sponsors. So um, it actually, it's like the start here of who wants to be a millionaire. You know, before they do the fastest finger first and they're all, <laughs> they're all, they're all doing their little wave. Great to have you on board today, ladies. Um, Rebecca, we have some exciting uh, developments next week. It, it's, I might start with, it's a particularly challenging time for many of our members um, mm -hmm our players who are missing football and also many of our players um, are students who would have been preparing for state examinations which will not now happen. So just in general terms Rebecca how busy a time has this been for Jigsaw? I think it's been incredibly busy and I suppose particularly obviously we've had to change the way we deliver our service because you know we can't do face to face so a lot of our online um, work has been incredibly busy so I know I'm involved in kind of uh, our Jigsaw online piece and I think was it four or five hundred percent busy I think Joanne you had a stat there the other week around that and uh, so we've had huge amounts of uh, young people their parents teachers accessing jigsawonline.ie and so there's webinars there's online courses there's group chats um, and then of course we've had a telephone line as well um, and all of those have been incredibly busy from as I said from young people and parents and other kind of concerned adults as well so we've we've had a huge increase in people accessing our service um, as well as obviously it being a very different service than what we usually have too so so how do you manage it these days Rebecca in, in the remote world that we're living in now how does how does it all work logistically for you guys um so I suppose um Obviously, ordinarily, we have uh, services throughout the country and our young people would come to our services and there would be a face to face service. So um, young people who are accessing our service already were uh, given phone calls from our existing clinicians. And mm -hmm. um, but then we also have an inbound service as well that uh, young people and their parents and other concerned adults can contact us. Um, we've been having group chats, weekly group chats. I think they're three times a week now. We yeah. have them through Jigsaw Online. Um, and then we've also been running webinars from our clinicians. Uh, so we've had weekly ones parents up to now and um, we've had a number of them for teachers we've had a number of them for young people kind of covering different topics so uh, so for last night we had uh, a webinar on you know uh, supporting young people to adjust to change we've had one around supporting young people around anxiety and then of course obviously how do we you know how do we mind our mental health during COVID-19 and everything that's going on and it, it, it's a challenge and I suppose when we talk about kind of the, the five a day later on like we'll see that actually a lot of the ways that we, we normally support our mental health we we can't do you know so uh you know for some of us it's talking to our friends or it's uh you know playing sport and we, we can't do a lot of that so that's kind of an extra challenge we see obviously and then as, as you were saying as well you know young people who were uh, gearing up for exams and they're no longer happening and i'm sure some of them are very happy about that but then there's an extra unknown then around around that and it's something that we've never done before as, as a country so obviously uh it's not nice to be in the mid the, the kind of the middle of a storm like that or to be the, the kind of guinea pigs in a, in a new way of doing things so yeah so th there's been a lot of change within the service but i think um I, th I think like like everyone in the world we're dealing with a huge amount of change and a huge amount of uncertainty but we've tried to respond to it really as, as best we can as an organization and i think um certainly we've uh, had good feedback from people who've participated in all the different types of service anyway so thanks for doing tr tremendous work and an, an an invaluable resource at particularly this at, in these challenging times Rebecca you mentioned the five a day I'm going to stay with you so we're going to have the uh, Lidl uh, ambassadors next week on board to tell people on a daily basis more about this so we all will be revealed uh, later on in the week so we're not going to get into the nitty-gritties we want a, a little bit of, su of a surprise for people later in the week in general terms Rebecca talk to us about the five a day and the messaging um, that we're going to have one team per day next week mm -hmm. So um, five a day basically is, it, it comes from a piece of research called the Foresight Project in the UK. Um, and what they were trying to find when they were set out to do this research was what, what are five individual things that someone can do to look after their mental health? So, um, and something that everyone kind of regardless of your ability or your interests, what, what, can, what can you do to support your own mental health at an individual level? Um, and so the things that they came up with were connect, 
uh, be active, uh, uh, keep learning, uh, give uh, and take notice. Sorry, I've talked about five a day, I'd say 18 million times in my, li in my life. <laughs> and every time I'm like, what's the fifth? Uh, so there are five kind of actions that you can do. Um, and I suppose the really important thing about the five a day is that, you know, uh, the way I would connect may not be necessarily the way someone else would like to connect. So I like big groups of people. I like chats. I like kind of that sort of stuff. But other people are maybe much more about one-to-one -one stuff or maybe about uh, texting or maybe about picking up the phone, whereas for other people it would be different. Um, and it's the same with kind of, you know, your be active or, or your take notice or, or your give or any of the other five a day. That's very much about an individual level. Um, I can go through all five of them if you want, Jackie, or do you want to... to yeah, we're back the top then the, the very first yeah one. so if we talk about connect so i suppose um humans are social creatures where we're hardwired for connection and connect is all about kind of using that connection and having those connections and obviously at the moment it's 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 very difficult for us to do that so we have things like zoom but i suppose we're also kind of asking people to look at different ways that we can connect with people at the moment so sometimes people are writing letters or they're kind of uh, having you know I, I have a zoom quiz every friday night with my friends and it's kind of become an absolute tradition now and we did bingo one week as well where we had a, what we were calling the crap raffle and everyone had a different prize that they just found in their house somewhere and, and that was the prize in the raffle so there were lots of different ways and, and I think the challenge at the moment is finding ways that we can connect with each other um, but it's so important for us and I, and I think a really important part of that connect piece as well is is the uh, reaching out for help you know and I think especially when we're struggling and I think sometimes as well you know at a time like this we can kind of feel like oh everyone is struggling so why should I you know reach out or why should I kind of be the one that that asks for help but what we're saying is that it's so important for us all to talk to each other and to reach out and to uh, to reach out when we do need help and I suppose reach out to each other if you feel someone is struggling as well you know and um, so connecting is all about that sort of uh, human connection and, and that we all need it some of us more than others but we all do need that human connection at, at some point so connect is really important like that and okay. um, the next then is be active so I think often with well certainly with the LGFA audience is probably the one that's the it's, it's the easiest one to sell I'd say in terms of how important it is you know and I think um, everyone like regardless of how you like to be active I think we all know that feeling of you know coming back from whether it's a walk or doing your yoga class or going for a run or a game of football or whatever it is and that kind of lightness that you can often feel after it um, and it's about kind of those endorphins that get yeah. pumped around our body and that protective effect that they have on our brain but I know for a lot of us myself included um connect our being active is also it also lets us get that connect piece and I suppose that's the, the challenge now isn't it we, we don't have our team sports yeah. anymore and we don't have that sort of social element but I think it's really important for us to still keep up um our ways of keeping active so I suppose I, I kind of was saying to you earlier there that I have my dog here and I've got two dogs and they're a great excuse for me to try and get out and get my walk and um, kind of you know like doing yoga you know all of those kind of things and it, it's again it's about finding what works for you you know for, for some people the idea of going for a run is like you, you know I might as well ask them to walk across broken glass you know what I mean but um for others that's exactly what they want to do um so it is about finding what works for you and I think especially now you know so um some people may be lucky enough to have access to a beach or to somewhere that they can go for a swim okay. um but for others they may not be they may not have that so is it a hit workout in your sitting room is it something out in your back garden or is it going for a walk around your local area as well so connect, so being active is very much about getting your your heart rate up and getting those endorphins kind of flowing great and number three number three then is uh take notice and take notice is one actually that that's it's i think it's really especially at times like this when things are there's kind of a future that you could run off into basically and worrying about what's going on and what's happening because take notice is about the present moment yeah. and it's about really kind of um experiencing the present moment so where you are uh how you feel um so for me like how i kind of take notice um is i love just going out in my backyard and sitting down and listening to the birds and for me that's actually a brilliant way for me to find myself back in the here and the now and listening to the starlings and the blackbirds and seeing what's there what can i smell what can i hear i can hear the neighbors next door that you know and and that for me is how i kind of ground myself because um you know a lot of the time even when things aren't as uh you know uncertain as they are now we often find ourselves we're up in the clouds you know or we're yeah. we're, we're six months in the future or we're we're thinking about oh what if this what if that and a lot of the time these things are out of our control and i think at the moment i think 
one of the really challenging things for a lot of people is that there's so much outside of our control, you know, and that we can, we can only control so much. And I think for take notice, um, it's very much about putting yourself in that present moment. So for some people that can be doing mindfulness. Um, I know certainly when I practice yoga, I find it quite good for bringing myself into the present moment as well. Um, sometimes people do gratitude journals or, um, you know, when we're talking about maybe kind of uh, younger kids, we'd say, you know, going on nature walks and kind of, you know, seeing what they can see or touch or smell, but it is about that kind of um, bringing yourself into that present moment. So um, it kind of stops us from running six months down the, the road yeah, and nice. having, you know, figuring out everything that we need to worry about before it's actually a real thing to worry about, you know? Yeah, it's lovely. We have a lake here where we live and there's uh, two swans and they had four little cygnets last week. So we're, we're out to see them oh, every day. And gorgeous. Yeah. And, and I think um, from talking yeah. to people, everyone, like loads of people have just been saying to me, they've never heard the birds so loud because I think we, obviously there's lots of things that to be anxious about at the moment, but I think there's, we're, life has slowed down to some degree, you know, and I think we have a bit more time now to, to actually take notice of what's around us. And even kind of, we go on a, a walk with the dogs every day and we notice things that we've never noticed, like the, the, the there's these purple flowers growing out of one of our neighbor's walls. And we're like, was that always yeah. there? Or has that, you know, and I think that it's a really great opportunity that we maybe don't always have. So take notice is, is about that kind of present moment and um, kind of being in that present moment okay rebecca hold on to the two remaining teams because i'm, okay. I'm conscious that joanne and, and sarah are here as well sarah a lot of what um rebecca is, is talking about there is resonating which i'm sure just for, from the from the legal point of view it's a lovely holy trinity i like to call it that we have here legal lgfa and jigsaw the the attraction of this partnership for legal sarah what is it about all of this that that, that really is, is is so good and so attractive for legal that's exactly it. Um, it just goes so well together because, you know, we're so passionate about youth mental health and we're also in partnership with the, with the LGFA. So the two of them together just, you know, reach such a wide audience that it's perfect, you know, the three together. So, you know, next week's going to be very exciting. There's lots of nice videos coming out uh, with our One Good Club ambassadors. And they, you know, at the moment now they're out of training. Um, they're all at home like we all are and they you know they're not in their normal routines and they're going to go through kind of you know how they're finding it how they're coping with their mental health and the fact that it's on social media as well is fantastic because they're reaching out to all of the young girls that are all playing LGFA and and others non-playing LGFA um, but it's perfect and you know um, we were on a call with them last week and we were going through what they're going to talk about in these videos and they're so passionate you know they're all role models and i'm just looking forward to seeing the videos it's it's going to be great yeah i remember sarah back when we were identifying the the the, the ambassadors for this particular piece um we couldn't have picked many better, better the girls we have yeah they're absolutely <laughs> phenomenal so we'll have nicola ward from galway kevin mcgrath from waterford Ian mcgallagher from donegal and carla Rowe from dublin to look forward to and their uh, particular messaging next week and more about that later on this week rebecca back to you for your final two teams get that slug of water into you before we sorry <laughs> you're, you're absolutely fine it, it, it's, hot, it's hot weather it's thirsty work so rebecca we oh absolutely to go. um three so down, our final two, two then are, are keep learning and give so uh, keep learning sometimes um and it's something that we're always really careful to phrase it because it, it's not about uh, your college work it's not about your school work um keep learning is about well what do you want to learn about and what what do you value you and what are the achievements you want to set out and do so um you know i think at the moment as well it's a great opportunity i'm back learning french on duolingo and being harassed by a little green owl every every day of the week um and you know so it, it is about those things what are those personal goals you want to set and um, everyone's learning how to bake banana bread and um, we're all like uh, at home and learning different things learning new songs on the guitar learning new kind of new all those kind of personal things and i suppose for you know even out the back with it with a football is kind of learning new skills practicing new skills and i think there's been a lot of skill challenges with the lgfa and all yeah. of those kind of videos and things too so it, it, it is about kind of setting those personal goals and i suppose what we get out of that for our mental health is that sense of achievement you know that that sense that i can set a goal for myself and i can achieve it and the confidence that that gives us and that kind of sense of competence as well you know that that kind of know-how that we have so that's really important for our mental health so keep learning is very much about that sense of achievement setting Excellent. goals um, and things that kind of are, are close to your own values as well whereas we, we might be learning things elsewhere that we don't we're not particularly interested in but we have to learn it for, for different reasons but this is about what what matters to you and and what what kind of is your your what, what are what are what aligns to your values 
I like it. And number five, Rebecca, we'll bring in Joanne, who's waiting very patiently, Joanne. Well, <laughs> number five is give, which is yeah. actually very appropriate for what Joanne might be talking about in a minute. So, um, so, so segue give, there, Rebecca. Sorry? Lovely segue there. You, you did that perfectly. I, I, I didn't even plan that one, to be honest. I wish I, I, wish I, I, could, I, wish I could say I planned that. But um, so, so give is number five, really, of, of the five a day. And, and what that about is, it's the idea of doing good makes us feel good. Um, and often, actually, um, when we do something good for someone else, we benefit as much as the person doing it. And it doesn't have to be massive things, you know, it, um, it can be about making someone a nice cup of tea or it can be helping out at home. Um, you know, and I suppose at the moment we've opportunities. We, we know that there's people in our community who maybe are more vulnerable and maybe need yeah. kind of a bit of a hand with shopping or just someone to pick up the phone and check in on them and see how they're getting on if they need anything. Um, so it is about that, that kind of, uh, a sense of well-being and fulfillment that we get from helping others and by contributing to our communities or to our families um and like and as i said it can be as simple as just kind of you know helping out around the house or you know just just doing something kind for someone um i'm one of these people who loves smiling and saying hello to everyone on the street so um always gives me a bit of a kick because i think people appreciate it or else or else they don't and they're <laughs> they're taking note of my of my face to avoid me in future but like i think even those small little things actually um it just it creates a nice community and it creates a sense of kindness and and i think when we learn that helping is is it feels well it feels good it helps us to reach out for help then as well in the future if you know what i mean so um it, it is really important to have that give side as well um, which does actually segue nicely into into Joanne's uh, into Joanne's piece, but but there are five a day, um, and I suppose I can if you have any other questions or if you want me to go back into any of them, then I, then that's that's no problem. But uh, they're they're actually fairly simple, really, and they're they're really nice things to do. And um, sometimes I find that if I'm having a stressful couple of weeks, that I kind of try and you know go out of my way and go, okay, have I got my five a day? What might help me now, actually? I think, I'll, I think I'll do this or I think I'll do that and we'll see how I feel after that. Yeah, you've explained it all absolutely brilliantly, um, Rebecca and Sarah. Very quickly on the, just a, a very, very quick hat tip as well to the Lead Legends initiative in, in terms of the give piece. And we're, we're looking to hear from the local community heroes who are doing so much um, for, for, for members of their community in, in these times. So you can check out our social media channels for how to enter. It's a pinned um post on our facebook page as well but joanne finally your your your, your time has come joanne just uh, from listening to rebecca there the five uh teams they intertwine lovely they're all interconnected as well joanne they really are and they, they really suit this uh this project really well um a good few weeks ago pretty much at the start of lockdown we got contacted by o'dwyer's uh ladies Gaelic football team in Balbriggan, um and they'd taken on this 1000 kilometer challenge for their own club and I suppose in talking to them, we realised they, they had been really struggling for a couple of weeks with, you know, players feeling disconnected, you know, not getting any training. You know, this should be the time of year where everybody's working towards a common goal, usually of a, of a league or a championship. But really now, um, the, what I've seen with the LJFA clubs is they're working towards a common goal of doing good and, and really kicking into their give element of their five a day. Um, so we've had, we've had a few kind of clubs come to us organically, the likes of Ben Ader and Hoth have done amazing work, um, Glavies and Roscommon, St. Monkins in, in Offaly. Um, and we really decided to put something, put a bit of structure around it and put together a nice five-day package so that a, a team captain or, or, or a club manager can go and say, listen, this is the campaign that we're going to do. We're going to pick a week. We're going to do a five-a-day. We're all going to go out and try and run a collective amount of kilometres um, for Jigsaw, but with the five-a-day very much built into each day. Um, so that each day they're you know the get active is, is, is pretty much covered and the give is covered but we actually give a lot of guidance then into how um, the participants can take notice connect and keep learning during that week as well so they're really ticking off all of, all of those boxes and Brilliant. really sharing with each other connecting with each other in a way that they they probably haven't been able to um, in the last few weeks and they're probably dying to um, to be in, in touch with each other in, in, in that kind of way and really celebrating themselves as a club as well we really focus on that and you know, it, it is sad that they're missing out on those opportunities to, to celebrate together and to, and to play together, but we're going to give them an opportunity to, to come together while staying apart. Brilliant. We've seen so many great challenges and fundraisers, particularly for charities in this time, John, and we're, we're more than happy to uh, add this one to the list of, of challenges that people can get involved with. So, Joanne, we'll have more details on that later on in the week. Just in, 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 in general terms and in human terms, how, how are you all... Uh, I'll go down to Sarah as well. How are you all doing in this time, Sarah? Business has obviously <laughs> changed a little for you guys as well and working remotely and that. But um, 
Little Ireland doing some phenomenal work as well, priority queuing and, and, and other initiatives as well, Sarah. Yeah, we're doing well. We're as busy as ever. Um, we have a lot of people from the office working from home, if not. But yeah, it's just, I think, about getting your own routine at home. You know, once you have a routine set, you know, I feel like your day, um, you know, and make sure you get out and, you know, be active, you know, get out, get your fresh air, go out for your lunch and, um, you know, stay connected, um, you know, all those kind of things. The five a day really helps you, you know, from working from home, I think. Um, so I've learned a lot even from doing this <laughs> and from the girls. So, um, yeah, I think it's all about routine and and I suppose, you know, not putting too much pressure on yourself at the same time um, because life is is different now. Um, um, so we have to adapt to that and and uh, relax. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just when you talk about um, Rebecca, the piece on, um, you know, n being a more aware of your surroundings and, and, and yourself and how you are at any given time. Just, I think, you know, it leads back even to the connect piece about people are starting to reconnect with nature and mm -hmm. the simple things in life, listen to the birds singing and, you know, um, there's, there's a flower out the back here and we can literally see it growing every day. That's how, how exciting our <laughs> lives are at the moment. You know, but to, to see and notice things like that, that's a very big part of it, Rebecca. It really is. And I suppose I, I, I love gardening. I've kind of hit my thirties with a bang really, but I, I love, I love gardening. And I think it's, it's amazing this time of year. It's actually an incredible time to be, to be in the garden because everything's starting to burst open and everything's starting to pop up and watching that and being it, it is really, I mean, it, it's, it's really great. Like, and I think, you know, like a lot of people, I, I would love to start running down the road and worrying about everything that's going on and where are we all going and what does it all mean and who are all of this sort of stuff. But actually just bring your back to the present moment and bring yourself back into your body, you know, rather than being up, up above in the clouds, as I call it. And um, it's just really important, especially at a time like this, when there's, there's so much that we could be worrying about and, um, and there's so many different articles and this and that that we could be you know there's so many rabbit holes that that you can be going down at the moment so i think just bring yourself back to that moment of this is who i am and this is where i am and this is what i can see and smell and hear and touch um and this is what i can control right now is this this little like 10 second bubble that i have around me you know what i mean so yeah i, th I think it's really important um and it's it's easier said than done as well and i'm not saying that i i am <laughs> i'm not some sort of a zen master constantly in the now certainly not but i think it's, it's a good reminder actually to kind of come back to it though rebecca enjoy the 30s because the 40s come quick let me tell you <laughs> um joanne i'm actually going to close off with your good self um so we've a lot to look forward to next week um uh, and, and as a campaign officer at Jigsaw, Joanne, I, I'd like to credit you on the on the work that Jigsaw are doing. And I know that many of our members um, have got a lot from it already and, and will next week. You must be very excited about what's coming down the tracks next week, particularly at a time where uh, many of our students would have been sitting um, and, and getting ready for exams. Yeah, so we, we've had a, a lot of ups and downs over the last few weeks in that, you know, a lot of the the campaigns and the, and the big fundraisers that we were planning and the things that we were looking to get involved with like the mini marathon or Helen Backer, all these things are all cancelled. So to have something that's going to be able to fill that gap um, over the next few weeks in terms of fundraising, but also in terms of engagement as well and, and keeping in touch with people and giving people the opportunity to be kind, I think is, is really important to us as well. Um, there's been a lot of focus on the things that we're missing and the things that, you know, oh, I should be, I should be doing my leaves there or I, I should be at a wedding and things like that. And it's really about just putting that focus elsewhere and really seeing what you can, where you can put that energy into. Good stuff. Keep up the good work, Joanne. So we look forward to Thanks. hearing from our Lidl Wooden Good Club ambassadors later on uh, this week. Sarah, we'll be in touch with you to uh, to tee that one up as 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 the the days and the weeks seem to be flying by. But for now, uh, Rebecca Murphy, um, Joanne Ryan, and Sarah Gordon, I really appreciate your time today, and thanks for uh, coming online to chat uh, with us here in the LGFA. And do stay safe and stay well, and keep up the good work. Thanks, Thanks Thank you. Thank you so much.